Hey guys, Room Picker here from the lock picking video, and I got a little bit of a different <coughs> lock picking video for you today. So I wanted to uh, do two things in this video today. I wanted to first, I wanted to show off this uh, challenge lock I built. This is going to go for the LPU uh, charity event, um, mainly because I'm pretty proud of the pins that are in here. Um, they're one of the first ones I've done on a Dremel, so they. They're actually pretty decent, not like hand carved or anything like that. Uh, but I also, uh, a lot of people asked me my approach on challenge lock. So I kind of wanted to show you like out of the gate blind, how I go about, you know, looking at challenge locks and stuff like that. So first thing I do, I get a lock like this is I look at the key. Sometimes the key is mummied. Sometimes the key is not. In this case, the key is mummied, um, but you can actually glean some information about this. Uh, looking at the bow uh, or head of the key, sometimes you can tell by looking at it, like for example, I can tell that this shape here is a quick set. If I didn't know what this was, it was a, you know, a KW1 uh, key. And uh, so normally that means it's either, it's uh, about five pins. And also, depending on what they use to wrap this, sometimes it's very tight around the key. You can actually see very faintly the outline of the bidding if you look close enough. In this case, it's paper, so you can't really get that information, but that's another thing I look for when I'm just studying the key. The next thing I do is I look for any hallmarks, because a lot of the time, um, you know, you're getting these challenge locks secondhand. Uh, so for example, this one, um, is Delta one and it has my initials uh, telling this rune on here so based on that if I got this from some random person I'd be like oh TR that's that's telling us rune um, next thing we can look at is the keyway you can see it's a quick set keyway and uh, what I'll usually do is I'll try to figure out what tension wrench will fit best at the top of the keyway or bottom of the keyway depending on um, what's going on. Um, this one seems to be 50,000, seems to fit very nicely on this top of the keyway. And because we have 50,000, we should have enough room for a 25,000. Yeah, hook one and hook seven. That kind of gives you some variety um, from the high and low cuts. Um, obviously, I know what this key is, but if I were, for example, if I didn't know, I would still take these two out because it's, uh, you know, un excluding uh, challenge locks that violate max, um, and in which case I would use a hook five, but uh, these will get you pretty far. So we got our tools, we've studied the key. Next thing I like to do is I like to do what I call a shake test, and you can hear that rattle in here. What that means, what that tells me is there are some chambers in here that have no springs in them. If I shook this and I felt movement but I didn't hear the click, that would mean that there is short springs in there. Now, to judge the strength of the springs, what I'll do is I'll stick my pick in here you, and then doing this you can also um, verify how many pins. So if you lift all the way to the top and just drop them one, two, three, four, five yeah so there's five pins in here if you lift all the pins at the top and and drop them one at a time you can hear the pins drop and count them but what I'm also doing is I'm lifting these individually to test spring strength so there's a spring on chamber five and one I can feel and then I feel no resistance on two three and four so with all that information we gave us that tells me off the bat that we are going to need to be careful setting two, three, and four because there's no springs in that chamber. You can easily overset them. And unfortunately, we can't glean any information off the key, but we can see if we can get this open. Now, I made this, but I have not picked this open yet. So this will be a first open for me on camera. Everything seems to be binding very hard. Get a 
little bit of counter rotation on stuff, but I can't tell if I'm over setting it because I'm not getting that pushback on a, on a core that I would expect to feel. We're in a false set right now. That was some counter rotation. Nothing on two, we're going to three. Three lifted, but I didn't feel anything. Two, oh sorry, four lifted. Five was overset. I felt that. Now, what I'm doing here, like I said, is I'm going slowly pin stack by pin stack, but I'm also learning information as I go. I can hear by the clicks that there are some serrated pins in here, and I'm going to need to manually counter rotate to get past some of those serrations. Now that pin in the back that I keep setting is over setting, so that tells me that we don't need to lift it very high. I think two or one might need to go up some more. deeper into our false set. No, that's set there. Oh, 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 okay. So we're in the money now. We're in a pretty deep false set, so that tells me that we're probably caught on a T-pin or, or some sort of um, serrated top, like a spike or something. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going like this on each pin to try to gently wedge them up, and I'm also feeling for counter rotation. So to see we got into a deeper false set, and we got the open. So what I call this massaging the pins or tickling the pins or whatever you want to call it. And what I'm doing is I'm just going like this. I'm not pushing like super hard. What I'm doing is I'm slightly slowly nudging them up, but I'm also feeling for counter rotation. If I, if I push up and I get a minuscule counter rotation, it's possible that you just have a pretty deep false set where you have to manually counter rotate to get out of it. So we did get the open. And so let's go ahead and lock this back up. Oh, that's right. There's a trap pin if you pick it this way, but I I made it so if you flip it upside down, you can relock it so it's, it's not that big of a deal. So let's go ahead and take the key out. And uh, there's the key there. I don't know if you see the bidding. And uh, one thing I forgot to mention at the top of this video, excuse me, was um, the other reason why I'm doing this video, key works, except for that trap pin. Um, the other reason I'm doing this video is SoFlow Picker is doing a giveaway. And he is very into challenge locks and I am very into challenge locks. And you're supposed to pick a lock that's your skill level. So I figured since I like to pick all my challenge locks before I send them out to people, if I possibly can. I think there's only been one uh, that I haven't picked, I think. Let's see, I'm trying to think. Um, no, I think I picked every single one of them except for Houdini. I've not picked Houdini yet, but I don't necessarily know if I'm gonna 
be able to pick Houdini. I made that one actually pretty difficult. Um, but the community challenge lock I built with Georgia Jim and them, I didn't get open either. But I also um, didn't get the final pick on it, I guess you could say. All right, so we need a shim and hopefully. Uh, I had the gut from the top, I think I messed it up already. Oh well, thankfully there is a thing in the gut from the top. I should probably make a note to shim top, or sorry, shim lock before I send this out. All right, so we'll take this top off. So we got a spring on five. We got a spring on one. And there's pin for that. That. Pin for that. Pin for that. And pin for that. Make sure I got the orientation on this correct. And that's right there. Excuse me while I organize these. I just want to make sure they're shown to you correctly. Um, I think that's how I wanted it. Let's see, how was that one again? I gotta remember which orientation this one goes in in one second. Anyways, while I'm working on this, um, Self Flow Picker, um, it doesn't have a lot of subscribers, but has a pretty good channel. Definitely check him out. He's doing a giveaway for some challenge locks. And um, if you know me, I am all about challenge locks. So this is my entry into that. But I also figured I'd kind of do a dual thing with uh, different... Uh, what do you call it, like ulterior motives, I guess you could say. I uh, wanted to teach people about my approach for challenge locks and uh, just, you know, show off my pin work on this one. So I threaded all these chambers and I widened the chambers in here with a drill and then I threaded them. So it's, almost, it's like a walled out threading on these. And uh, let me show you the pin work on here because that's what I'm most excited about. I don't think I've ever had as beautiful pins as these. These are probably the most beautiful ones I've made to date so far. But uh, yeah, so I'm really excited to send this one out and get people picking on this one. It was a pretty fun pick actually. But that is Delta One. And that is my entry into SoFlow Pickers giveaway. Thank you all for watching. And I hope you guys learned something and you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks. Bye.